Hey, what's up? Hello, welcome or welcome back. So earlier today, I saw a TikTok that was like, your brain doesn't have arms, so why are you letting it hold you back? And I thought that was really cute and kind of inspired me to draw a few cards um, in relation to, yeah, what fears hold us back? Why do our brains have such a tight grip on holding us back? And maybe one step we can take to uh, overcome that fear, maybe loosen the grip that our brain has on whatever, <laughs> whatever things that we are fearing. So this first card that I'm going to draw represents um, the fear itself. Like what characteristics about the fear is holding you back? Why does your brain want to cling on um, to this specific fear? And I just want one card. I had four cards pop out. So let's see. One one card and interesting the card that was flipped up while I was shuffling is the fool I just want to make sure there wasn't more than one card is the fool so interesting the fool is all about taking that first initial step onto into a new journey the fool is card zero it, it really kicks everything off the tarot is the fool's journey but if you look at the fool she's just jamming she's walking she doesn't really realize there's a cliff or maybe she does and she just doesn't care and she's about to walk off this cliff and you know potentially tumble down potentially it's not even that big of a cliff it could just be a little tiny hop you never really know and that is part of the fool's journey you don't really know what's coming up so maybe that fear of the unknown is what is clinging um is what your brain is clinging on to so much. When I was getting um, these cards ready to do this, the Six of Wands also came out. And the Six of Wands is a person sitting on top of a horse um, holding a wand and the wand has like, like a ribbon on it and there are people surrounding them. And when I think of that card, sometimes I think of a protest, but I also really think of victory. The card traditional mean, traditionally means victory. So maybe... The fact that you know you're going to be victorious can also be a fear within itself with that six of wands since it did come out while I was prepping. Um, so maybe the fear of success, but also fear of the unknown. So it's like your brain potentially could be grasping on so hard because it knows you're going to be successful. And with success comes change, it comes attention, it comes more responsibility. And brains don't necessarily love changes. They like being really stable and in their own lane because evolutionarily that's what kept us alive for so long. So with the fool, your brain could really be like, homie, there is a cliff. Like, we're not going to walk off this cliff. But your spirit really is like, no, trust me. The Fool, if it was a bad card, it would be dark. But it is so bright. Like, the sun is behind. The, the, the sky is yellow. The sun leads the way in tarot. And when you see the sun, it's a positive omen. So maybe there's not recognition yet with your brain being like, no, this cliff isn't that big of a cliff. I'm cliff. I'm supported by the sun supported by six of wands that's where I want to go I want to be on that horse with the victory so maybe there's a little bit about yeah the unknown of it all um that could be definitely what your brain is grasping onto and holding you back so with that this next card is like what can I learn from this fear so maybe what can I learn from my brain being scared of the unknown or what can I learn from the unknown and also what can I learn from being victorious because anytime you're victorious you took a leap of faith generally um to win you never really know if you're gonna win or you're gonna lose and there are moments in your life that you've taken big steps towards winning so maybe what what are some of those lessons interesting the high priestess I say interesting before every card <laughs> the high priestess so the high priestess is all about your intuition and interesting we have two major arcana cards a major arcana kind of trump the minor which could be like the six of wands or like you know the two of cups or whatever so these are big overarching overarching themes in your life so maybe this particular situation or goal you have fear around the high priestess could also be telling you to look back, like I was saying before, look back on all the other times that you were victorious and what were the steps that you took to like hype yourself up. 
because the high priestess in in the traditional Rider way, I think she's holding the Torah, but in this she's uh, has a laptop. And this kind of reminds me of like collecting data and reviewing data. And maybe because I'm a Virgo rising, I just love data. But it's kind of like looking back at, you know, charts and graphs and like, what is the story? Uh, a lot of things about data analysis is like, what story is the data telling you? So one lesson you could learn is to trust your intuition. High Priestess is all about intuition. But another um, lesson I hear is like, if you journal, go back and read the journals. Or even if you don't journal, and if you just post like on Instagram, and they're not really like, journal posts, look back at the time, maybe the last time you had something going on in your life, a goal you wanted to achieve, but was but you were being held back by fear. Maybe look back at some of those Instagram posts. And even though you're not writing about that fear, maybe in the caption, the picture might take you back to that time and what you were doing and how you hyped yourself up to walk off the cliff to eventually be victorious, which I'm going to I'm going to pull that card out. Um, actually, I'm going to do that right now. One second. Oh my gosh. It was literally on the bottom. It knew. It knew I was talking about her. So it's like this high priestess, even the way I'm holding it, which I'm looking in the camera and it's tripping me up. <laughs> even the way I'm holding this, the high priestess is in between the vic the victory Okay, this is backwards. The victory and the the initial leap off of that um, off of that cliff. So she's really telling you the lesson you can learn is that you've done this before and that you have the data and you have the proof to get you from one state to the other to maybe loosen up that grip within your brain. So what is one practical step? that the high priestess wants you to take. I did kind of list a few, like look back at your journal or look back at your Instagram, but what is one practical step that you can take with getting familiar with the unknown or getting familiar with the feeling of success? What is one practical step? So we have the three of swords. And the three of swords, traditionally, I always think of it as like a cheating card. But this, this, I love this card because the black in it really represents like, <laughs> to me, like oozing and get rid of, getting rid of toxicity. So swords in the tarot represent the way you communicate and the way that you think. And so this to me is kind of like a purge in a way. It's like, let's stab the heart as much as we can and let all of the, the ooze like ooze out and that sounds really violent and I definitely don't want you to, <laughs> to stab any hearts but I think one practical step you can take to, to overcome this fear is in addition to looking back in journals in addition to looking back at like past Instagram posts or or what or pictures or whatever it's like literally writing down everything you thought like why are you scared? Like, what about the unknown is scary? Is it the dark murkiness? Because that's another way you could look at this card as well, is if the darkness and the murkiness of the unknown is scary, then how can you bring in the light or like the light pink? Like what thoughts and what ways you communicate can kind of like melt away. I'm like thinking of stopping. What about it? Like what thoughts can you use to like, chip away at um at uh that fear of the unknown a lot of ways I like to qualify um with my thoughts and with my communications is putting on it's possible because a lot of the times with affirmations they can be really big and very positive like like the unknown is great great changes come from the unknown or whatever but if you're scared of the unknown it's like going from zero to a hundred. That's such a big jump. So maybe a qualifier you could put on and start practicing while you look back at those is like, it's possible that the unknown can bring good changes or, you know, it's possible that I am brave enough to step into the darkness or it's possible that the darkness of the unknown, the murkiness 
only lasts for a little bit and that there is brightness all around me. Like, you know, when you're driving through a tunnel, the tunnel only lasts like one second, but our brains, because we can't see the other side, sometimes are like, oh my God, this is going to be, this tunnel's going to be forever. But our brains, they want to hold us. They really have a, a strong grip on keeping us where we're at. And so this is just all about loosening up. It's, well, it's possible this tunnel could last forever, or it's possible this tunnel lasts only two feet. It's possible that being victorious, oops, it's possible that being victorious brings on changes and challenges and new attention. Um, it's not possible. It's guaranteed that it brings, but it's possible that I'm organized enough to handle that or I'm brave. I use brave enough a lot for myself. It's possible I'm brave enough to handle it. It's possible that I'm emotionally equipped. Another way is like, okay, well, if saying it's possible, um, it's possible that my intuition is correct with what I want to do. Um, Maybe if that is a little bit too much, you can ask yourself questions or affirmations as to like, how is it possible that my intuition is correct? What instances in the past has my intuition been correct? Like, so maybe those are some practical steps you can take is like actually journaling out. What are your thoughts? What are your ways of communicating? What is your self-talk? Like how like record it. How is all of that happening when you think about that goal, when you think about that fear? And what swords can you take to cut it out? Maybe that's a better way of saying it. instead of stab it out, cut it out. Like what how can you take the swords, your thoughts? No, 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 your sword. Yeah, your uh, ways of communications and your thoughts and how can you cut out that dark murkiness? So, that's all I have for you today. Definitely let me know down in the comments what spoke out to you, any interpretations that you have of the cards. I'm always learning and I always love hearing other people's interpretations of cards and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.